Awesome. Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream. Today, today is July 6, 2021. And we're continuing our reading for the drug war trading cards that we bought during a comic book haul video comic book haul number 53 and we've found out about these cars during a comic book reading of real war stories number two uh, from eclipse comics that came out in 1991 so i tracked some down and we got ourselves a couple of boxes and we did the reading of the first 18 cards in the last stream what we're going to do in this stream is read the remaining 18 cards there's 36 cards in total and uh, these cards blew me away okay how amazing they were and they blew away i think everybody that was uh watching the live stream we were very pleasantly surprised as to the information and just the historical uh, context of it right it was absolutely amazing these are kitty cats and uh again how are you doing hello hello and uh what we're gonna do is we're gonna read the rest of the 18 and what we ended up doing is or what i ended up doing is that cell uh, is releasing pulling out each of the card readings and releasing them as individual videos okay so there's 18 videos on sensor tube on bitchute on rumble and on odyssey with all of the first 18 cards read right we ended with this one the pope's bankers right and we basically read the back of this and if there's any commentary sometimes they throw in a lot of commentary or chat through in a little commentary okay and uh i think it was well worth it pulling out 18 out uh we ended up gaining some subscribers on uh bitchute rumble and odyssey but we lost like a hundred subscribers on youtube for <laughs> or sensor tube for doing this first reason being is sensor tube doesn't like us uh, uploading more than one or two uh, videos a day so we ended up i broke this into two days loaded nine and loaded nine and lost like 50 per day right and some people didn't appreciate uh having notifications come up if they got notifications uh aside from that welcome to another live stream game we're gonna do the same deal with this one right fire exit hi chicho hi all hello hello hope you guys are having a fantastic fantastic tuesday um it's pretty nice summer kicked in right summer has kicked in uh, plants are loving it um, we're loving it elder god how are you doing hundred warriors lost on the field of censorship <laughs> yeah it was a man i swear watching sensor tube stats is absolutely brilliant right uh you do something that uh, the sensor tube technocrats do not appreciate and uh, the tone has been set by the ceo of sensor tube right wachowski whatever her name is uh she came out and said she was only gonna promote authoritative <laughs> authoritative content right that means mainstream corporate propaganda right and anybody that's not authoritative in their opinion they were gonna suppress and they are doing that now if the ceo is saying that that means every level of management have has been programmed has been put into place to do the exact same thing right so that is the model of sensor tube right now which is uh, pretty horrendous as far as a business model goes <laughs> seriously uh loomer 9198 i love the individual videos to be honest i never thought i would ever learn so much from uh from trading God. You, uh, brother loomer or sister of course me too that's why i loaded them up one of, it had to be done i was like man this is like pure like two to five minutes of information uh it needs to be out there right and that's the reason i did it and we will definitely do it for these as well no matter how many subscribers we lose um irrelevant uh, you know whatever <laughs> right 
Lali Lali, how are you doing? Whoop whoop, my first <laughs> live stream. <laughs> nice to have you, Lali Lali. Welcome to our Twitch chaotic live streams. Uh, CRISPR, how are you doing? Big tech censors is out of control. Out of, and as far as I'm concerned, those those, those people who have been uh, uh, the the technocrats who have been uh, on the forefront of censorship, those technocrats have prevented important information from disseminating into the population that might have saved lives. As far as I'm concerned, those technocrats who participated in censorship and were on the forefront of censorship, they should be arrested and thrown in jail. And I hope when the dust settles and all this, they are arrested and put in jail for what involuntary manslaughter? <laughs> like, what do you call it? How could you censor health information? Blows me away, right? Cheryl, how are you doing? Hi, Chicho. Hi, all. Hello, hello. Elder God, I have canceled my premium service. Good. Permanently this time. Good. Sensor tube isn't getting my cash. Good. Even though I don't get the cash, I don't, I'd rather they don't get the cash. <laughs> Real MC Mike, how are you doing? Hello, Chicho and gang. Hope you're doing great. I want to ask you guys your favorite alternative to Sensor tube. I'm currently using Odyssey and Bitchute. Yeah, I'm using Odyssey, Bitchute, and Rumble. I, will, I use all three platforms. Uh, really i watch more on odyssey bit shoot and rumble individually than i do on sensor two all right so uh sensor two is my fourth video sharing platform that i go to uh that i watch content on like i don't know i don't know how many other people have done this transition i would love to get a little peek in real time of how much damage the censorship is doing to these platforms right crack how are you doing brother you you bought joe sacco's uh, uh uh the land uh paying 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 the land oh man what was it called again i was gonna grab that right off the bat when it came out uh, last year uh, but i just held off it's it was so depressing joe sacco reading and i know the history of the indigenous population in canada uh a fair bit of it so i couldn't go into that right like uh, joe sacco's palestine i could only read about a third of it or half of it i just couldn't read anymore it was so depressing right just knowing the history it, it's just sad right lally lally will the dust settle though will the dust settle good question good question i'm hoping it will uh i want to see some heads roll <laughs> mc mike me too i love to collect uh that uh, that that uh, yeah <laughs> i would love it i'm seeing it like i'm seeing it from my end of a, a content creator that is not creating content that sensor tube is promoting right so uh i'm seeing what's happening to individual content creators that are not bought and paid for and that to me is interesting uh, very interesting cheryl crack hope all as well crack i sure did paying the land paying the land it's incredible yeah i bet it is i read like three page three or four pages when it was being solicited man 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 mc mike maybe in, um include data on facebook and twitter yeah and disclaimer given no matter what i keep on saying this uh, uh nothing i do is personal finance information but i'll give a little disclaimer family has put some twitter okay crack i know it as well but the way he lays it all out is amazing and the people he talks to are very interesting yeah his interviews are amazing like uh the bosnia herzegovina one uh, he's done so many words and days of destruction days of revolt obviously like real life stories real life stories real life stories mc mike chicho you're not the only one lots of other content creators say the same thing about that platform and for weird reasons too yeah i know <laughs> it's like watching content on other platforms is absolutely amazing it's like a breath of fresh air it's like the internet that should be right oh my god i'm currently wreaking havoc on twitter will my 
Uh, right fist, I can't survive the month. <laughs> Chris Hedges, Padre, Padre, Padre. Indy, Chris Hedges and Joe Sacco's Days of Destruction, Days of Revolt. Right? Again, quick intro, let's get into the reading. Uh, if you want to know what this work is about, I am on Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Chicho, C H Y C H O. I don't put anything beyond paywall. Everything's Creative Commons. Share and share alike right for those of you that are supporting this work on patreon thank you gang very much for the support i appreciate it and i know many people do as well just from the feedback i've gotten from just the work we've done online these cars are so cool man yeah padre amazing 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 sensor tube did not appreciate uploading each one at a time <laughs> It's so funny, so funny. And we are live streaming on Twitch. Twitch.tv for slash Chicho Live. C H Y C H O L I V E. If you want to participate in the chat, boop, boop. Twitch is where you want to be at. And, gang, for those of you that are on Twitch supporting this work on Twitch, thank you very much for the support, for the sub, for the follows, for being here, for the discussion, for the love, for the bits. And, mods, thank you for taking care of business it is because of the collective support we're getting on these platforms that we're able to do what it is that we are doing i do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on mines vk gab parlor and bitcloud and you can follow the work there and we do have a discord page you can come to our twitch channel anytime you want and type in exclamation mark whoop, social and all those links will pop up including the discord page at the bottom there there's a few hundred people sharing information participating in discussion open discussion sometimes agree sometimes disagree it's always a good idea when human beings talk to each other okay without authoritative figures censoring our speech right or those who are a little confused trying to censor others okay so you're definitely welcome to join us there elder god i shared some of them uh, to my associates on other platforms they like them nice nice awesome elder god <sighs> crisper have you seen the new platform trump came out with it's called getter is it getter no it's uh he's doing his uh, video on rumble and i subscribed even though i'm not you know i, I don't support <laughs> indeed if you watch my videos you know what it is right but he's on rumble i don't know what getter is i don't know the getter is that like twitter get her get her <laughs> that's not pc <laughs> i love it i'll join <laughs> yeah get her okay it's like too awesome awesome building back get her <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> too funny too funny and gang for live streams where we don't have any visuals we will be <laughs> uploading the live the uh, the audio as podcast to soundcloud um as a podcast and now those podcasts should be available on your favorite podcasting platform including spotify and itunes and you can bet your ass that this live stream will be loaded on sensor tube and each individual card uploaded as a standalone video so there's going to be this live stream plus 18 videos coming up uh at some point within the next couple of weeks and you can bet your ass we're going to lose at least a couple of more hundred subscribers uh because of that that shenanigan that we're pulling right uh so be it for those that don't appreciate uh being on sensor tube i highly recommend joining bitchu rumble and odyssey because all of our content will be uploaded there okay uh and gang as always thank you for the support on all these platforms uh it keeps us going uh thanks for being here gang and let me take these things down and Padre, you think Trump is largely gone for good, or will there be the Empire Strikes Back situation? Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna. This is, this is just the beginning, Padre. Padre, this is just the beginning of uh, a lot of things unfolding. The media want him, want him back more than any anyone else. Indeed, 
what about his son what about a lot of the other people who are towing the same party line right and by the way as far as i'm concerned uh better of the two uh, the what is it <laughs> the uh what is it the lesser of the two evils is, is they're they're evil uh, right bad 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 i was thinking return of the red <laughs> and gang don't forget two days ago it was julian assange's birthday 50th birthday right so we got to work towards freeing assange right so never forget free assange free assange free assange julian assange is a publisher and journalist that is being crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity for more information see wikileaks.org defend.wikileaks.org or our julian assange and wikileaks playlist on censor tube and keep in mind just imagine just imagine if we had a platform like wikileaks and people fighting to make sure that there was an outlet for those that were leaking information of corruption right from centralized power may they be governments institutions corporations right just imagine that the information contained in these cards could have been coming out in real time right just imagine what the world would be like then Biden is still looking for his socks. Biden is looking, and Trump, Trump is a puppet, elder God, in my opinion. Otherwise, his foreign policy would not have been what it was, right? He he pandered to uh, those who control U.S. foreign policy, uh, the neocons, the the Zionist warmongers, uh, the Pentagon, the CIA. Um, did he have to do it did they take him as bill hicks would say did they take him down into a into a basement level said you sit down here show him a video of multiple angles of jfk being assassinated and then they turn off the video and say any questions right is that what they did possibly i don't know right but i'm sorry uh just because he he he, he didn't kill as many people as obama and bush and biden is doing uh in the process of doing it doesn't mean he's a good guy um, he can kiss my ass as well just saying just saying right cheryl goes ooh, gang should we should we continue with our reading let's do this we're about 20 minutes in we're about 20 minutes in just in just in terms of uh trump he could have he could have pardoned Assange right away. He could have said, "I pardon Chelsea Manning. Uh, Edward Snowden is free to come home without persecution, and Julian Assange can walk out free." He did not do that. He was a hypocrite up to the tenth magnitude, right? Someone who turns around and says, "I love WikiLeaks," and then turns around and says, "I don't know about WikiLeaks." Well, which one is it, right? I don't think they'd let him do it, even if that isn't the case with other presidents as well. Possibly, possibly, but you gotta stand for something, right? Elder God, I think every president is a puppet, indeed, except Kennedy. Yeah, that's why he got taken out, and that's not a good road to travel down without backup. Um, there has to be a time. Uh, he, how old is he? He's like 80 years old. I don't know, 75 years old. At uh, what? time in your life are you going to make a stand to be remembered in history uh, if he was 30 years old i'd say okay he's still you know he wants to live a little longer right it, when he's that old right and he somebody has you have family that you want to make sure the world is a better place for them you need to make a stand right why pass it on to your children there's too many interests needed protecting too many interests needed protecting gang i'm going to turn off notifications i'm going to turn off chat i'm going to turn off this video and we'll come back after the reading we're going to read this set and i'll do a little intro at the beginning too just to let people know what this is this is as well just in case i upload this individual sec individual full reading without the live stream intro okay 
So let's take this down and this down. I'll see you guys. I'll be here, but I'll see you guys after the readings. <clears throat> On a sip of water. <clears throat> Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream. Today is July 6, 2021, and we're doing a follow up live stream to the reading of the first 18 cards of the drug war trading cards that we picked up in a previous comic book haul. Okay, and what we're going to do there's 36 cards in this deck. So what we're going to do is we're going to read the rest of the 18. So this is number 1 to 18, right? And they were amazing. And we loaded the live stream, the full live stream, on all four video sharing platforms that we have, right? Sensor 2, Pichute, Rumble, and Odyssey. And I ended up, because I thought these cars were absolutely amazing and the information contained in them was phenomenal, uh, history that you will never learn in any centralized indoctrination center so what I ended up doing as well is uploading each one of these individual pulled out segment readings on all four platforms and we're gonna do the same for this next set as well okay let's take these guys down these are the 18 that we read already absolutely phenomenal the links will be in the description of this video uh, as to what part one is. And they contain an incredible amount of information on their back. Right. Number one, number 18. Now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna start reading number 19 okay. card number 19 from the drug war trading cards from eclipse comics from 1991 okay. what is this klaus barbie and the fiancés of death what is this? The Bolivian cocaine coup. Wow, wow, wow. I don't know this one, the history of this at all. Living it up, living it up. Card number 19. The Bolivian cocaine coup. The 1980 Bolivian cocaine coup was financed by wealthy ranchers and drug lords under Roberto uh, Surez Gomez, a former cattleman who had become Bolivia's top cocaine baron. His cousin, Colonel Luis Ars Gomez, was the coup's most important military contact. The two men gave General Luis Garcia Meza, a bribe of $1,300,000 to lead the operation. Surez Gomez was impressed with the paramilitary skills of a mysterious German businessman named Klaus Altman. Altman displayed such an affinity for intelligence work and integration techniques uh, that, are, that on Surez's recommendation, he was given a leadership role in the Bolivian army. Altman, in turn, hired two young Italians, Perlogi Pagliai and Stefano del uh, Chai to help plan the coup. Assisting Altman was a group of mercenaries and former Nazi, Nazis known as the Fiancés of Death. On July 17, 1980, the cocaine generals seized power within, within months. Within months, it was learned that Pagliai and Del Chayei 
were right-wing P2 terrorists with suspected kills of three on three continents and the mysterious Klaus Altman was none other than fugitive Nazi war criminal Klaus Barbie the butcher of Lyon oh wow Barbie who had spent hundreds of uh, who had sent hundreds of Jews to their deaths had avoided persecution when American Amer persecution when Americans in occupied Germany recruited him as an informer in 1947 and engineered his escape Barbie was extradited to France tried and convicted Pagliai was killed when international authorities tried to abduct him to stand trial in Italy for the P2 ordered uh, Bologna train bombing but Del Chayei escaped the dragnet and fled to Argentina in Bolivia a reform coalition of cocaine growers and military men ousted Garcia Meza 13 months after the cocaine coup Wow apologies about butchering the names gang difficult Don't know this history at all the bolivian cocaine coup just some of the shenanigans in south america card number 20 world anti-communist league check this out death squad convention Buenos Aires welcomes W A C L. I don't know what that stands for. Who are these people? South America. Everybody wants a piece of the pie, eh? Who's that general? Squad convention. Let's take a look at this. Number 20. World Anti Communist League, founded in 1954 by a group of Southeast Asian drug lords, the organization now known as the World Anti Communist League, WACL, World Anti Communist League went international in 1966 thanks to the efforts of KMT leader Xi'an Kai-shek, South Korean politician Park Chung-hee, Japanese right-wing gangster Redichi uh, Saka Sakawa and Yoshi Kodama, and South Korean Messiah Reverend Sun Ming-moon. Oh, wow former cia officers assert that the u.s government acting covertly through the cia provided seed money for wacl via ray klein cia station chief in taiwan from 1958 to 1962 and later cia deputy director of intelligence klein continued to attend wacl that's the world anti-communist league conferences well into the 1980s and his ww2 oss associate john singh lab became head of the american chapter in 1981. the 1980 wacl conference was held in buenos aires argentina hosting the meeting was general carlos surez mason ah, architect of argentine's drug finance dirty war against his own people general louis garcia meza and stefan del uh, chai leader of the Bol leader of bolivia's 1980 cocaine coup were on hand at the conference these men with met with paramilitary leaders from central america to discuss using dirty war tactics in their nations mario said sandoval al 
Alar Alarcon, godfather of Guatemala's death squads, and Roberto Dobusan El of El Salvador, who had trained in the WACL paramilitary or military academy in Taiwan and ordered the death of Archbishop Romero, also attended. Holy! Within months, Argentine advisors took command of dirty war campaigns throughout Central America. Tens of thousands of civilians had died at the hands of WA. CL inspired and US funded paramilitary death squads and contra force forces since then. Wow 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 Buenos Aires. We know two of the connections. Well, we learned about the Bolivian one in this one, right? And involved with uh, assassination of uh, Archbishop Romero, right? Now, what was the other one? Oh, yeah. Sun Ming Moon, right? The cult in Korea. Holy. Crazy. Card number twenty one School of Coups Buba Military Academy Corpse Castro New York NC North Carolina Is this related to the School of the Americas? Leondes er, uh, Oh my god Arias Lenny, Class Clown Latin Club. Rios Mont Monti, Bible Study, Table Tennis. What? Walter Rees, Jose Rosa, Cheerleader. So these are some of the main players of what was going on here, right? The School of Coups. Part number 20. Let's take a look. Card number 21. Sorry. Card number 21. Narco Brass. That is the School of Americas. The School of the Americas, located at Fort uh, Gulick in the Panama Canal Zone, is a vital training center for Latin American military officers, sympathetic to America's security and co uh, corporate interest in the region. The school was opened in 1949. By the, by the 1970s, more than 33,000 Latin American military officers had passed through its portals. The curriculum emphasizes counterinsurgency warfare, a military uh, euphorism for the specific uh, for the specific battery of intelligence, torture, disinformation, disappearance, and death squad tactics associated with low intensity conflict. Because of the school's vigorous anti Marxist orientation, as well as the success of its leading graduates, the School of the Americas is often referred to as the School of Coups. Coups. General Augusto Peniche of Chile and General Hugo Banzer of of Bolivia are among the school's illustrious graduates but General Manuel Noriega of Panama is the most famous of the lot Noriega who also studied media manipulation at the US military intelligence school in Fort Bragg North Carolina worked for first for the US Army and then the CIA allegedly earning hundred eighty thousand dollars a year during the Reagan era in income he supplemented with Medellin cocaine trafficking profits. U.S. trained Honduran officers such as General Jose uh, Bu Bueso Rosa, Colonel Lendiz Torres Arias, and General Walter Lopez Rees 
were among the most notorious Latin American military drug lords of the 1980s, providing basis for the U.S. Contra war against Nicaragua while profiting from uh, links to the Men Medellin cartel. Bueso Rosa was con convicted in Miami in 1985 uh, of conspiring to murder the president of Honduras, a plot to be financed by importing a ton of cocaine into the U.S. Now, just a note here regarding this information here, the School of the Americas. It's also located, I believe, in Fort Bragg in the United States. Okay. Or there is a School of the Americas, the center, the main place is the United States. But a few years ago, I believe in the mid 2000s, School of the Americas was getting a lot of publicity because of the Bush era regime as well as during the Obama years. Okay. And they changed their name. I forget what they're called now. It's not called the School of the Americas anymore. They changed their name, right? But it's the same deal. They train with US taxpayer money, tens of thousands of terrorists and torturers and send them out into the world to terrorize and torture millions of people. Crazy, crazy. Card number 22, the Medellin Cartel. Let's check this out. Let's check this out. What does that say? George Ochoa, Ochoa narco terrorist. What's on there? No. Look at the mustache. Look at all the assassinated people around. Card number 22. The Medellin Cartel. The infamous Medellin Cocaine Cartel of Colombia rose to prominence with the help of corrupt Colombian military officials and friends in high places, Panama's General Manuel Noriega and his intelligence chief Mike Harari, an Israeli Mossad officer, were two such friends. In 1982, Noriega and Harari helped the cartel set up a cocaine processing plant in Panama and thereafter allowed smugglers to use Panama's airstrips and launder profits from Panama's banks for a hefty fee, of course. Another friend was Oliver North, who accepted the cartel's help in shipping arms to the Contras in return for his arranging radar clearance for US-bound Medellin cocaine flights. Colombia is uh, racked by violence since 1987, 10,000 people have been murdered, over half under age 20. The dead include hundreds of judges, scores of journalists, and three presidential candidates. Narco terrorists such as car cartel leader, leaders George Ocha and Pablo Escobar are responsible for some of these deaths, but far more are caused by the Triangle of Terror an alliance of traffickers, landowners, and military officials that organize or organizes that organizes death squads to kill supporters of the leftist patriotic union party. These death squads are trained by Israeli counterinsurgency experts such as Yair Klein, who heads a mercenary agency that teaches security forces to combat what the what he calls left-wing terrorists, communists, and Maoists. The Bush administration, which gives $50 million a year in military aid to Colombia to fight its bogus drug war, recently scuttled 
an international coffee agreement, thus causing a 50% drop in coffee prices and providing further incentive for Andean, farm, Andean farmers to shift from growing coca, uh, coffee to coca. part of the agro wars as well right supporting the farm yeah it's crazy and in Colombia we're in 2021 this continues to this day with different players in the game some different players right and there's a reason why there are mass protests in Colombia right now and have been for well they began about uh, a year and a half ago wow Barry seal rest in peace what's this card number 23 all these folly this has got to be all over north no that's true well this isn't all over north we know all over north from a mile away but Barry Seal must be connected with that. Barry Seal. Is he the pilot that brought all the cocaine in? Maybe. Card number 23. Ollie's Folly. Barry Seal, a drug pilot that's what it was drug pilot turned dea informant had by 1984 penetrated the top levels of the medellin cocaine cartel he told the dea he would get all the cartel's leaders in one place where they could be arrested but the cia learning that the dea had photos of seal refueling in nicaragua and meeting there with cartel leader Pablo Escobar and alleged Sandinista official Frederico Vaughn wanted to use these photos to implicate the Sandinistas in cocaine trafficking. Enter Contra lover Oliver Oli North, who lobbied the DEA to release the photos, unwilling to jeopardize the upcoming drug the DEA refused North then leaked the information resulting in an article in the Mooney owned Washington Times that implicated top Nicaraguan officials in drug trafficking the DEA was forced to pull seal from the field as his cover had been blown the planned mass arrest never occurred a year later seal was killed by Medellin hitman his plane the flat fat lady resurfaced in 1986 when it was shot down over Nicaragua with CIA hand CIA hand Eugene house house fuss board aboard in 1986 President Ronald President Reagan displayed the seal photos on TV as a congressional vote on resuming contra aid was nearing this picture he said quote this picture he said shows Frederico Vaughn a top aide to one of the nine co commandantes who ruled Nicaragua loading an aircraft with illegal narcotics bound for the US end quote Congress subsequently voted 100 million dollars in military aid to the Contras but not only was Vaughn unconnected to Sandinista's officials he may have been a US government employee his uh, mangi photo number rang in a house rented to the US Embassy since 1981 his mangi phone number not photo his his managua Managi phone number rang in a house rented to the U.S. Embassy since 1981, and North diaries contain references to him, including the 1984 entry, quote, Freddie Vaughn, coming in late July, end quote. Wow, wow, wow. And 
all this is connected to the Iran Contra, right? Iran Contra affair. His his picture rang a bell. That's why I guess there was a pilot. And Barry Seal, the name is it rang a bell. As soon as you connect it up with uh, uh, Oliver North and the CIA, you know it's uh, running drugs, cocaine. fall guy and the snowman I wonder if this is related to the movie with Sean Penn and stuff there was the car cocaine and the Contras card number 26 car cocaine and the Contras Number 24, Car, Cocaine, and the Contras. In 1979, the Sandinistas booted director Anan Anastasio, Somoza, Anastasio Somoza out of Nicaragua, a nation historically under such absolute Yankee control that its paper currency was at one time signed by the founder of Prescott Bush's banking firm. Nicaragua was now in the hands of Marxists. The U.S. soon launched a war against Nicaragua from Honduras and Costa Rica, where Contra armies composed of American right-wing mercenaries, CIA-trained Bay of Pigs Cubans, and the remnants of the Somocestas Somo had been formed. In Costa Rica, the war was directed from the ranch of John Hall, a former Indiana farmer who had offered his services to NC, NSC advisor Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North. According to several witnesses, among them Stephen Carr, a Florida mercenary who worked for Hall, the ranch served as a transit point in a guns for drugs scheme that supplied weapons to the Contras and Medellin cartel cocaine to the US drug market before he could bring his story to Congress however Carr was found dead from an overdose of cocaine which some speculate was not self-administered Hall now face it faces Costa Rican murder charges for his role in the 19 84 attempted assassination of renegade contra leader eden pastora in la Pen pensa nicaragua in which several international journalists were killed the washington dc based christic Insti institute is pursuing a lawsuit against hall and 28 other defendants involved in the La, Pen La Pena bombing and com compellingly assert that many of these men, such, uh, such Rick Richard Secord, Thomas Kleins, and Rafa Rafael Chichi Quintero, have financed worldwide covert operations with drug profits for 20 years all over north has his hands all over latin america huh? and a gang gang apologies about brutalizing these names <laughs> history aspect of it there's so many players in this So Carr was assassinated. 
card number 25 drug tunnel the Mexican connection card number 25 Mexico is the largest source of marijuana and heroin entering the US and the transit point for nearly 70% of US bound cocaine as well among the more ingenious smuggling routes was an elaborate tunnel under the border to Arizona which was unearthed in 1990 Mexican president Carlos uh, Salinas, the Gortari's recent roundup of major traffickers, has not halted the flow of drugs between uh, because corruption is endemic in Mexico's police and armed forces. It has, however, led to the U.S. providing $17 million in military and police equipment. In the past, Mexican officials have used such aid to destroy rival drug producers as well as to terrorize the populace, a practice which, according to the America's Watch, continues. The most infamous Mexican narcotics police outfit was the recently disbanded Federal Security uh, Directorate, DFS, for 45 years, the DFS supplied CIA agents such as E. Howard Hunt with counterintelligence information. By the 1970s, Hunt's Bay of Pig, Pig's colleague, Alberto Cecily Falcon, was the most important drug lord in Mexico. DFS members acted as bodyguards for Mexico's top traffickers and established huge marijuana plantations. They also organized the Guadalajara cartel, which has shipped more cocaine to the U.S. than any other syndicate, for providing protection, logistics, and removal of competition. The DFS took 25% of the cartel's profits. Former DFS, DFS chief Miguel Nazar Haro, mastermind of the Guadalajara cartel, Guadalajara, that's what it is, Guadalajara cartel, was on the CIA payroll for a decade. He was in, indicted in 1982 for running a stolen car ring, but the CIA blocked his um, prosecution calling him calling him their quote most important source in mexico end quote when the u.s attorney who brought the case objected to cia obstruction he was fired <laughs> don't mess with the cia you lose your job or your life drug cartel card number 26 the shocking fate there's got to be torture related oh crap look at that yikes that's trippy oh you know where this one's going right you know where this cable goes wow beautiful image powerful scary a shocking fate card number 26 enrique Camar camarina enrique Camarina 
Enrique Camarena was an aggressive DEA agent stationed in Mexico. Discovering that drug traffickers there operated under the protection of Mexican police officials, he made repeated but unsuccessful attempts to alert the Reagan administration to, to this fact. On February 7, 1985, Camarena was kidnapped outside his Guadalajara office. Several weeks later, his body was found, bearing marks of brutal torture. While the DEA zealously sought Camera, Camarena's murderers, going so far as to illegally abduct sus suspects from Mexico, the Justice Department dragged its feet. Four men were eventually brought to trial and in 1990 were convicted of kidnapping and racketeering. Perhaps the U.S. was reluctant to press the case because a public trial would have exposed embarrassing rifts between the DEA and the CIA over the latter's collaboration with Mexican drug dealers. Witnesses testified that the CIA had protected these traffickers in exchange for their help in the war against Nicaragua and had trained Contras on the ranch of Guadalajara Hera drug cartel leader Rafael Caro Quintero, one of the men who ordered Cam Camarera's murder. Also damaging was the revelations that one of the defendants, billionaire Juan Ramon Mata Balesteros, was a drug lord who had worked for U.S. intelligence. Mata linked to both the Guadalajara and Cali cartels had used his private airline to fly arms to Contra base camps in Honduras under a U.S. State Department grant. Quintero and his partner Ernesto Fonseca Carello were convicted in Mexico of Camaralena's murder and each was sentenced to 40 years. 27 co-defendants were also convicted and given sentences ranging, ranging from 6 to 38 years. The DEA and the CIA actually on different sides to a certain degree, right? I'm pretty sure that's been resolved by now. Oh, this has got to be playing Colombia. Operation Snowcap. Card number 27. Andean Fiasco. This is one cento. Operation Snowcap. Andean Fiasco. On twentieth on August twentieth, nineteen ninety, the House Committee on Government Operations released a report on the success of Operation Snowcap. The Reagan Bush administration program aid, uh, aimed at stopping the flow of drugs into the United States at their source. Riddled with corruption on contradiction, Operation Snowcap, the House concluded, was a joke. Snowcap's goal, Snowcap's goal had been to eliminate coca crops, cocaine processing laboratories, clandestine landing strips, and other trafficking operations in the coca producing countries of South America. But the committee learned that less than 1% of the region's cocaine had been destroyed by this campaign. DEA agent Michael Levin asserted that his attempt to infiltrate top level Bolivian drug cartels was sabotaged by his superiors' insistence on an immediate low-level bust which blew his cover. The 1990 report 
found that in Bolivia, Peru, and Colombia, authorities are deeply involved in narcotics trafficking. For example, when a DEA team tried to visit a processing site in Peru, local police had opened up and fired at their helicopter. Operation Snowcap was simply following the formula of previous drug wars launched in Mexico, Guatemala, Bolivia, and Argentina. In each of these countries, the military used U.S. drug war money to reinforce ongoing dirty war campaigns launched against local left-wing movements. Perhaps this was the covert, in covert intent of such U.S. drug policies. While the military grew more repressive, the major drug growers had grown wealthy, wealthier. After three and one half year of operation, Operation Snowcap, the only significant drug uh, traffickers who had been caught and put out of business were those in direct competition with the major cartels. Crazy. And this is uh, this has got to be connected up to Plan Colombia, which was basically U.S. military uh, getting in bed. Well, they've always been in bed, but really overtly getting in bed with Monsanto at the time, I believe, and one other company as well, pharmaceutical company and chemical company, and taking their pesticides and amplifying them, making them like way more brutal and spraying Colombia and Panama and South America, really. Um, some of the cocoa crops they could find, right? Or they knew or they were trying to get rid of the competition from their people, right? And poisoning the land. There's a tremendous amount of uh, people who have suffered because of this chemical warfare, really, that was conducted in South America for a number of decades. Horrendous. And as far as I know, part of this operation continues to this day under a different name. Card number... 28 operation just because just because and that's a shadow of a plane flying over bombarded area where is this look at the people there's people dead on the ground Operation just because look at that we know this continues to this day just look up WikiLeaks uh, collateral murder video that Chelsea Manning released card number 28 the invasion of Panama this my god this was crazy if you remember this I remember it it was insanity Shortly after midnight on December 20th, 1989, U.S. forces for the tw uh, 12th time since 1903 invaded Panama. Their mission was to depose longtime CIA asset General Manuel Noriega, an in in indicted drug trafficker. The 24,000 man invasion force included 4,500 paratroopers, making this the largest airborne assault since World War II. A local seismograph recorded 90 explosions in the first 10 minutes and 417 within 14 hours. Superior technology and firepower quickly crushed all resistance. Defense Secretary Richard Cheney called the attack quote, the most surgical operation of its size ever carried out, end quote. And this is piece of shit war criminal Dick Cheney we're talking about, right? But the official death toll of 500 to 600 badly understated the reality. A recently uncovered army memo reads, quote, 
payment of individual combat related claims as in Grenada would not be in the best interest of the Department of Defense because of the potentially huge number of such claims end quote another army document states that a, states that quote about 10 blocks of high density housing of slums were destroyed end quote Panamanian Defense Forces headquarters adjoined this district known as El Chor Chorelo and 25,000 people 80% of them black lived there wow most of them asleep when the invasion began independent human rights groups put the death toll between three to five thousand with another 25,000 homeless to cover up the carnage the army excluded the press and Red Cross from heavily bombarded areas for three days during which time they seized hospitals sealed the morgues and committed on-site incinerations and burials in common graves without notifying the families of the dead Jesus diggings diggings at 11 such mass graves goes on despite the lack of help from US Army or paramilitary officials this is the invasion of Panama during Bush seniors time in the office right and I was young I was in my what would I be in my early 20s at the time or 20 and I knew my politics then and it was horrendous watching this take place but there were a lot of yahoos uh, in Canada and the United States that were cheering this on just like they were cheering on the invasion of Afghanistan because they were completely brainwashed thinking that yeah they this was a just invasion and one connection with this is is the Panama Canal in 1999 the Panama Canal was supposed to be handed over to the Panamanian people so they could manage it themselves that didn't take place exactly the way it was planned to take place I believe officially it has now but there have been caveats uh, mainly related to the sort of a loophole there saying that the Panamanian military cannot protect the Panama Canal so the United States still has one of its largest military bases in Panama I believe crazy what's this one Truman's panty raid we read something about this in a previous card what does that say Almindon the maze and there's a swastika right there who's that the little mannequin exhibit C who is that is that Bush exhibit D is that cocaine exhibit B we don't know what B is maybe it's the panties what is this one card number 29 general Manuel Noriega oh this is the trial of man Noriega I believe because the US government kidnapped him brought him into the United States right Look at the shelf. There's like jars of frogs in there or something. I wonder what the swastika is about. It's got to be World War II uh, war criminals there, right? think the mannequin is because Noriega they they brought in voodoo stuff and mannequins but let's read this let's see card number 29 general Manuel Noriega while searching for fugitive general Manuel Noriega US Southern Command Chief General Max Thor Thorman reported that Noriega's beach house 
contained 50 kilos of cocaine and evidence that he and his uh, Borojas were practicing Brazilian witchcraft on um, enemies like Ronald Reagan and Henry Kissinger. Noriega rumored to be wearing red underwear to ward off the evil eye, eventually took refuge in the Vatican Embassy and later turned himself in to U.S. authorities to face persecution, uh, prosecution on a 1988 U.S. drug trafficking indictment. The U.S. Army later admitted that the beach house cocaine was really tamale flour. As Noriega awaits trial, his case is being hampered by the government's refusal to unfreeze 20 million in foreign banks which had 20 million dollars in foreign banks which he needs to pay his defense attorneys in addition authorities have uh, violated his civil rights by taping phone calls between him and his lawyers should Noriega's case ever come to trial the true extent of his role as a middleman between the U.S. back contras and the Medellin car cocaine cartel, undertaken as a favor for his longtime CIA benefactors, could prove embarrassing to George Bush, whose role in the Contra supply operation has so far been cloaked in secrecy. The invasion left the Panamanian economy in shambles damage is estimated at 1.2 1.5 to 3 billion and though the u.s promised 420 million dollars in aid only one fourth of that has been uh, delivered by the end of 1990 nor has removing noriega made nor has removing noriega made a dent in panama's drug trade illegal drug ship shipments through panama or more abundant than ever and president andara is so far unwilling to weaken his country's bank secrecy laws this is very much very much the same game plan that has been going on since then as well right same thing they did in afghanistan right opium shipments keep going through the roof after the NATO invasion of Afghanistan right crazy narco dollars narco dollars what is that narco dollars Whose picture is that? Endara, Endara. Twenty dollars, Endara. Who's Endara? Who's the other guy? Noriega. Noriega is on the five dollar bill. Who's this person? Who's this person? Greenspan. Oh my God, is on the hundred dollar bill. Greenspan. Federal Reserve Chair for a number of years that totally screwed over every American citizen for decades to come. Greenspan. Oh my. Gotta read this. Gotta read this. Holy camoles. Narco dollars. Narco dollars. We got Greenspan let's check this out card number 30 card number 30 silent partners ex-democratic senator william proxmire who chaired 198 chaired 1980 hearings on money laundering found that many banks are addicted to drug money just as millions of americans are addicted to drugs Collusion between drug traffickers and their silent partners, the bankers, is natural. Traffickers need banks to deposit cash, transfer funds, and reinvest profits. Banks need cash to maintain legal reserves 
for outstanding loans at 150 at 150 billion dollars a year drugs are the third largest industry in the US after food and electronics and all the prof profits go untaxed the bank secrecy act of 1970 requires all banks to identify the depositor and the source of cash deposits over ten thousand dollars but many banks ignore the law or file reports too late for the government to take action this is true not just of small latin owned banks in florida but of major banks as well in 1985 the bank of boston was fined the paltry five hundred thousand dollars for failing to report 1163 illegal transactions worth 1.2 billion dollars and crocker bank was fined 1.5 million for failing to report two transfers of hot money from hong kong worth 3.343 billion dollars others find include others find include bank of america and chase manhattan mobsters chase manhattan mobsters can also bypass the law by making multiple deposits each too small to alert federal authorities local federal reserve branches show billions of dollars on in unaccounted for surpluses every year panama is the largest laundry laundry for cocaine profits president guillermo and endara and vice president billy ford are part own owners of of banks that have watched washed millions for colombian drug lords other others panamanians with cocaine ties include the ministers of treasury and labor the supreme court chief justice the attorney general and the ambassador to washington and the ambassador to washington it's uh it's interesting they didn't get into greenspan here okay this guy right here greenspan there's a reason his face would be on a hundred dollar bill while noriega's would be on a five dollar bill okay greenspan is the architect of much of the misery that has befallen the middle class in the united states okay with his monetary policy and his double speak and his irrational exuberance and the way they manipulated the economy and crashed industries okay. i remember this came out in 1991 urban myth card number 31 who uses drugs let's check this out urban myth who uses drugs contrary to popular notion that drug users are mainly black ghetto dwellers ex-drug czar william bennett recently noted that quote the typical cocaine user is white male a high school graduate employed full-time and living in a small metropolitan area or suburb end quote in 1988 to 1990 survey of 350,000 junior high and high school kids found that 7% of white students use cocaine compared compared with 7% of black students whites were also bigger users of marijuana 24% versus 13% and alcohol 57% versus 29% in all in all age groups higher percentages of whites use drugs than blacks but it is blacks and minorities who are featured in media coverage of the problem and who continue to fill the courts and jails 
1990, a 1990 study found that former from 1985 to 1988, drug um, prosecutions of white youth dropped 15 percent, while for non-whites they jumped 88 percent. One in four black men under 30 is in are in prison, on parole, or on prohibition. Over half of them on drug-related offenses. For whites, the figure is 1 in 17. As black columnist Clarence Page explains, quote, a well-off user who makes his or her de deals in downtown office buildings or in a quiet suburb is more difficult to catch and more expensive to prosecute than a street corner crack dealer in an inner city neighborhood. Blacks and Hispanics are disproportionately stopped, searched, and swept on site. Instead of, instead of war of, on poverty, we wage war against the poor." End quote. Indeed, the government's war on drugs fails to address the social conditions, such as lack of jobs and affordable housing which breed drug abuse and the culture of violence associated with it. 1990 saw new homicide records set in eight of the nation's largest cities, including Washington, D.C. Urban myth. for fawn hall tells all do you know what that role is for oh look at she's got a white powdery nose look at her huge pupils look at that big smile got a little straw action happening with the money that's why a huge percentage of cash has traces of cocaine or used to anyway and you got the white nose huge pupils and a big smile look look into the camera fawn hall tells all who's fawn hall card number 32 crimes and misdemeanors fawn hall recently admitted to drug enforcement administration sources who interviewed her during a drug investigation in washington dc that while serving as Oliver North's personal secretary from 1985 to 1987, she was a weekend cocaine user. North was the Reagan administration's point man in aiding the Nicaraguan Contras, one of whose leaders, Arturo Ru Ruiz Jr., was dating Hall at the time. As is now known, the Contras and their American handlers were up to their necks in cocaine smuggling though north was never uh, prosecuted for his for his part in the drugs for guns conspiracy he was convicted on lesser charges and sentenced ironically to spend 1000 hours educating teens on the dangers of drug use compare this to the case of washington dc's black ex mayor Marion Barry. Barry was arrested on January 18, 1990, after being lured by an ex girlfriend to her hotel room where hidden camera hidden video cameras recorded Barry smoking crack cocaine supplied by the FBI for the sting. The 51 minute tape shows that the woman coaxed Barry into lighting up while spur spurning his sexual advances. Barry's lawyers claimed that their client had been an FBI target for eight years, during which time agents went through his credit card bills, staked out his house, monitored his bank account, and checked his tax returns. And moreover, 
that the government had spent 440 million dollars over a 10-year period for sting operations against other black politicians like Julian Bond and Andrew Young though the jury found Barry guilty of only one misdemeanor charge his public career is ruined while North does GOP fundraisers and sells bulletproof vests and Hall and Hall is training to be a newscaster Wow Wow and compare this to the present right I know this video is going on censor too but compare this to the present with H B videos coming out, right? Just a troubled boy. Fawn Hall tells all. Look at that eighties hair. Big hair, big hair, cocaine hair. Look at that. face Danny takes a toke Danny takes a toke that's ganja Coors oh don't drink Coors in Canadian Canada we call Coors piss water used to call it anyway Danny takes a toke who's Danny oh this is a joint he's got in his ear look at his bloodshot eyes Danny takes a toke. Dan Quail, it is Dan Quail. Card number 33. Dan Quail's Smoky Trail. During the final weeks of the 1988 presidential campaign, federal prisoner Brett C. Kimberlin called several reporters alleging alleging he had smoked marijuana with Dan Quayle at a 1971 frat party and had sold Quayle pot 15 to 20 times over the next year. Four days before the election on the eve of a press conference Kimberlin was placed in detention and barred from taking talking to reporters on election night while reporters awaited his phone call Kimberlin was again uh, sequestered Bureau of Prisoners director J Michael Quinlan claimed he did this to protect Kimberlin from fellow prisoners but Quinlan's contacts with the Bush quail campaign team days before the election election leave no doubt the story was squashed for political reasons since the night since the 1937 marijuana stamped act made it illegal marijuana has been classified like heroin as a schedule one drug with no medical value despite therapeutic uses known for 150 years marijuana relieves symptoms of um, glaucoma restores appetite reduces nausea and is essentially effective in treating AIDS and cancer patients for side effects of chemotherapy as a recreational drug it is less dangerous to the user or social uh, or society than alcohol and far less addictive than tobacco marijuana use can impair short-term memory and daily uses are often poor students the same could be said for watching too much TV. Marijuana fiber, known as hemp, is not a drug and until it was banned, was important, important to industry. Hemp is the strongest, most rot-resistant natural fiber known and makes superior rope, twine, and cloth. It is four times more pr productive per acre to grow hemp than uh, pulpwood trees for making paper the declaration of independence was written on hemp paper okay. and regarding cannabis okay 
also known as marijuana but marijuana is more of a derogatory term now that CIA came up with and we know that now right but cannabis has a tremendous amount of uh, beneficial properties aside from helping with nausea increasing appetite um, it also opens up blood vessels so a lot of weightlifters bodybuilders actually and athletes actually uh, consume cannabis not recommended just sharing information okay look this up please okay don't take anything i say with a grain uh take everything i say with a grain of salt uh but especially bodybuilders uh to increase blood flow to muscles and now we know that cbd oils help with inflammation and many many other skill skin ailments then quail potato boy and cannabis it's still scheduled as a class one drug with no medical use even though in federally even though multiple states have now legalized the recreational use of cannabis as well as many more the medicinal use of cannabis and there used to be 10 years ago five people under federal law that had exemption to use marijuana as medicine operation green sweep that's cannabis right there card number 34 marijuana wars operation green sweep marijuana wars the u.s is this is the second largest producer of marijuana in the world after mexico growing 10 million pounds a year worth four billion dollars enough to supply 35 percent of the consumption of america's 10 to 20 million uh, marijuana users some of the highest quality marijuana is grown in the so-called emerald triangle Humboldt, Men, Men, Mendocino, and Trinity counties in Northern California. Since 1983, the state's campaign against marijuana production, CAMP, has conducted military style sweeps of the area, seizing more than $2, two billion worth of plants in seven years. The result of CAMP eight raids have been a tr uh, tripling of the price of California homegrown finding it possible to make the same profit growing much less California's pot farmers have moved their operations indoors the state's marijuana industry has thus become decentralized and almost impossible to detect in the summer of 1990 for the first time ever, federal troops, 200 National Guardsmen, and Bureau of Land Management Rangers conducted the marijuana raid, dubbed Operation Green Sweep, in a federal cons conservation area called King Range. The troops confiscated 1,408 miniature plants wor worth no more than $2 million. 17-year-old Blossom Edwards encounter, encountered silent camouflage troops on a hiking trail near her home. Quote, all their automatic weapons were pointing at me. I yelled. I tried to get them to talk. They wouldn't lower their guns. End quote. On August 9, 1990, local residents filed a $100 million lawsuit claiming that federal agents illegally invaded their property 
wrongfully arresting them and harassed them with low-flying helicopters and loaded guns. Marijuana wars. And these marijuana wars, just so you guys know, again, this these cars came out in 1991, right? In the 1990s, Canada, especially British Columbia, where I live, became a major supply, supplier of cannabis to the United States and to Canada. It reached a point where the US government considered British Columbia, classified British Columbia as a narco state, the same as Colombia. In the early 2000s, they actually, or they tried to extradite Mark Emery, a Canadian businessman, for selling cannabis seeds to Americans through the mail. And in the mid 19, uh, in the mid 2000s, he was extradited to the United States and served five years in prison there. Okay. So this, what they're talking about here, that the United States was doing in the 1980s, 1970s, 1980s in California, right? Late 1980s and early 1990s, they started doing in Canada during the early 2000s a lot of canadians were very very pissed when black hawk helicopters those black silent helicopters were coming across the u.s border into british columbia to conduct these same type of raids on cannabis plants in bc forests okay and bc farms so what's what they're talking about here as far as i know right still continues to this day on a smaller scale because a lot of states now have legalized right. the new drug czar who is this schmuck new drug czar who's this guy Card number 35, Bob Martinez, Bob Martinez. Card number 35, Bob Martinez. William Bennett's resignation as drug czar in November 1990 and his replacement by former Florida governor Bob Martinez was accompanied by much ballyhooing about the progress made during Bennett's two year at the post. The government claimed that under Bennett, cocaine use had shrunk to a mere 660,000 hardcore abusers. Early in 1991, however, drug officials added 1 million users to their to this estimate saying that previous figures had failed to count users in colleges high schools and jails during bennett's term heroin heroin use actually rose and drugs entered the u.s in record amounts bennett's failure to curtail drug imports is linked to the bush administration's refusal to enact sanctions mandated under a 1988 federal law against 20 countries, including Panama, Hong Kong, Colombia, Canada, Italy, and Australia, who have not reached agreements with the US to curb money laundering. As for new drug czar Bob Martinez, his best credentials may be that his failed 1990 re-election campaign was managed by the president's son, Jeb Bush, and that he hails from Florida, America's drug import capital. For years, CIA trained Bay of Pigs veterans like Frank Castro and Armando Lopez Estrada used Florida as a base to mount terrorist attacks against Fidel Castro and Latin American leftists. 
while other CIA trained Bay of Pigs, Pigs vets like Juan Rostoy, Restoy and Mario Escobar, who had uh, risen to power through the Traficante mob, financed these operations with narco dollars. The money was often laundered through the World Finance Co Cooperation, owned and operated by Bay of Pigs vet Guillermo Hernandez Cartea. By 1981, Miami had become Wall Street for the international narcotics trade. And some of these players we read in previous cards. Right. And that was card number 35. The new drug czar. And the last card the last card up in smoke up in smoke up in smoke they're burning the constitution the last card we the people and there's bush with the American flag leaf on his willy up in smoke card number 36 I think this is the only card where the name of the card and the description are the same up in smoke George Bush's drug war has created a domestic climate hostile to the spirit of the Bill of Rights Bill of Rights we the people in 1989, then drug czar William Bennett advocated beheading drug, be beheading drug dealers, an interesting take on the Eighth Amendment's protection against cruel and unusual punishment. In 1990, Attorney General Richard Thornborough authorized the impoundment of drug defendant, defendant Manuel Noriega's savings making hash of the fifth amendment's ban on seizure of property without due process of law even more troubling is the attack on the fourth amendment's guarantees against unreasonable search and seizure led in 1989 by the department of transportation's mandated drug testing of private employees while the specter of stone pilots plummeting to earth with human cargoes in tow is an uh, arresting one it has little basis in reality from 1987 to 1988 the federal aviation administration conducted random drug tests of 20,000 workers tested only 118 turned up positive none was deemed a public hazard most were cited for off-duty use of marijuana which is detectable in the bloodstream for weeks. In 1989 poll, a 1989 poll found 62% of Americans willing to give up a few of the freedoms we have in this country to support a war on drugs. Oh, those dumbass 62 Americans. The anti-drug hysteria that led to this dangerous shift in public mood is linked, ironically, to the failures of the Bush administration's drug policies. By ignoring the influence of poverty and racism on drug, on drug abuse, by relying on imprisonment instead of treatment, and by implementing a foreign policy willfully blind to the de uh, dep depredations of the international narcotics trade, Bush's drug warriors have seen to it that they will be gainfully employed for years to come that paragraph right there sums up u.s foreign policy connected to u.s domestic policies connected to our centralized education system and propaganda and complete indoctrination of a population to support things that go against their well-being welcome to the new world order 
drug war trading cards text copyright 1991 Salim Yakab art copyright 1991 Salim Yakab Eclipse Comics PO Box 1099 Forestville California 95436 This is the full deck gang. 36 cards. I hope you enjoyed. I'm gonna have all of these cards individually in their own individual videos loaded on. We already have the first 18 up. We will do the next 18 as well. Okay, or the next 18 over here because one starts off over here, right? And we'll have that up on all four video sharing platforms. And what I'm going to do is return to the live stream. Browser, chat, pop on, turn on the camera nice reading nice read gang nice read now that we knew what to expect it was uh it was just nice to read them all and the names there's so many players in this whole thing wow 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 card 33 needs to go in a display case all their god sounds god 30 that's quail quail the crackhead or a quail what's it called 33 daddy takes a toke this guy dan quail this guy was what a joke what a joke right max wild america made was all about this indeed Card 33. Where's card 34? That's 32. Let's keep these in order. Let's keep this in order. This can't go on sensor tube. It's got to go on sensor tube. Oh my god, it's got to go on sensor tube. It's got to be done. It's got to be done. We're going to lose subscribers, but it's got to be done. It's got to be done. I cannot reach the depth some uh, other people could get on or do on this. O M Nymphet. Spell potato for me, Dan. <laughs> Mister, he's a guy. I remember that. Eh? <laughs> it's got an E at the end. What? The man, the legend, Smith. How we doing? Knights of Old Comic. Awesome. Looks like a cool set. Awesome. Awesome set. I think Kill the Messenger movie covered some of this. Oh, did it? Car twenty four. Cool. 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 Cheryl. So sorry, but every single time I hear contra this is what uh, runs through my mind be a start why cheryl america made a movie with tom cruise covers this really i remember that i think i think they have a new name oh my god what does it say in 1990 wacl changed its name to the world league for freedom of democracy damn wlfd but it has uh, it has preserved its traditions and former ties. It unites representatives for more than 100 countries and has eight regional divisions. It is currently a member of the United Nations Department of Public Information and has its headquarters in Taipei, Taiwan. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Grow Forest, Chicho. I bought four packs of these to have and possibly give out as gifts later on. Such a good find she just such a great find grow for such a great find hello my name is steak it's truly sad that you can learn more from trading cards more than you ever will from the school system today indeed 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 but i'm very happy to have these very happy to have these i'm very happy to have done the reading for these right we will Lose sensor tube. Well, I don't think so. I hope not. I hope not. 
I hope we don't get kicked off the sensor tube. That would be unbelievable, right? So ridiculous. Cheryl, it was the cheat code for the NES Contra game. Ah, was it? Hilarious, Cheryl. Hilarious. Whenever I hear Contras, I connect it to Iran Contra on Ollie North, Oliver North, and the Bush, and and all that jazz really that's 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 reagan that's that's my connection that's the cheat for the nes contra game awesome awesome why do you think uh sensor tube is going to kick us off elder god i mean we read some stuff that's it's his history like i know they're censoring history and health and all that stuff <laughs> but this is this is the lowest the most under the radar way i could figure out to share information like really the most pleasant way which is what education is about really elder god i have something to say is better to burn out than to fade away better to burn out than to fade away gotta stand for something otherwise you stand for nothing right fun that was a fun stream i'm glad we got these done i'm glad we read these i might be okay i think we'll be okay i got enough eating pomegranate videos and <laughs> and, and food videos and cooking videos and comic book videos for them to go man how are we gonna kick this guy off off of sensor too i think we're just gonna shadow ban him and and remove subscribers from his channel when he when he when he does bad things <laughs> Gerald oh my god what the hell car crash in Chicho Land <laughs> I think that person was fading away maybe or was going out with a bang Cheryl glad there was no crash after that squeak yeah yeah we did the sound effect though some people they drive a little too fast need for speed need for speed gang we're almost into two hours we timed this one pretty well let's call the stream if you're going to be around tomorrow night we're doing politics 8 p.m pdt my time uh ba -ba -ba. thursday we're grading comic books and uh, taking offers on comic books saturday i think we're doing the same grading and taking offers on comic books and these are comic books that i'm going to be selling maybe through ebay or if we get a reasonable offer during the stream i have a main road near me it's crash central yeah yeah i've been around those i've been around those this one is not bad here is not that bad uh and then we have a couple of movie streams and we've got a personal finance stream we're going to look at stocks right and talk about investing in personal finance next week early next week i believe uh monday tuesday and wednesday we got that going on i would have to check the schedule aside from that gang thank you for being here if you want to know what this is about i am on patreon patreon.com forward slash chicho c-h-y-c-h-o if you want to support this work if you want to follow this work patreon is a good way to do so i don't put anything behind paywall everything's creative commons share and share a like for those of you that are supporting this work on patreon i hope you enjoy what we are putting out ronnie how are you doing welcome welcome to the end of our stream we are live streaming on twitch twitch.tv forward slash chicho live c-h-y-c-h-o-l-i-v-e if you want to participate in that chat twitch is where you want to be at and gang thank you very much for the support on twitch and mods thank you for being here and taking care of business I do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on Mines, VK, Gab, Parlor, and BitCloud. And you can come to our Twitch channel anytime you want and type in exclamation mark social and all those links will pop up including our Discord page at the bottom right there that you're welcome to join. There's a few hundred people there that are sharing information, music, articles, lectures, memes, pics. Uh, anecdotes and whatnot and just talking and uh, it's a nice place to be so you're definitely welcome to join us there elder god chicho i am very angry about movie stream time i will be dying of so oh brother i thought you were okay with the late early morning late 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 night i should have switched I, I, oh i wish you you got to tell me i was gonna check with you but then you were 
you're good with the <laughs> with the early morning. <laughs> okay, my apologies, man. My apologies. Because Elder God is in the UK, so we set it up at 8 p.m. my time. It fit with my partner's schedule, and she's a nurse, so I adjust my schedule accordingly. Um, Elder God, if you want, I can do a readjustment. I can re-announce. Let me know. If you want it done, I will do it. Okay, I will do it. But I'm in West Coast Canada, Elder God in the UK. That's eight hours difference. 8 p.m. equals 4 a.m. UK time. Oof. And it's the middle of the week, I think. It's the middle of the week. Let me know, Elder God. I'm okay with switching it up. And I think everyone else will be as well. Okay. It's okay. I will get coffee. <laughs> up to you, brother. For live streams where we don't have any visuals, we do upload the audio to soundcloud.com forward slash chicho. C-H-Y-C-H-O is a podcast. And those podcasts should be available on your favorite podcasting platform, including Spotify and iTunes. And we will be uploading this live stream as well as the individual readings of the cards to censor to to bit shoot to rumble and to odyssey i'm guessing we're going to gain subscribers on bit shoot rumble and odyssey and i'm guessing the the censor to management and the automation is going to punish us for loading these on to censor tube by unsubscribing people from our channel we lost a hundred plus subscribers from the last set the first 18 cards we uploaded uh, some people unsubscribe because it was too many uploads but when i upload information like this that goes against the authoritative sources that they say they're going to promote we get nuked so be it i'm bouncing us at the 33,000 subscriber we go above 33,000, I go a little bit more hardcore, it comes down. <laughs> then it goes back up. <laughs> so I'm, I'm riding the fine line. I'm riding the 33 fine line. 33 fine line. Which one's 33 fine line? Oh, we're riding, we're riding. The quail, Dan quail, takes a toke fine line. That's the number I'm riding. 33,000, gang. Okay, on sensor tube. 33,000 on sensor two. That's the line. That's the number we're riding. Okay. We'll see if we can increase it. Gang, thank you for being here. One of my guys just went down today. Fine line of cooking and being cooked. <laughs> oh, no, your, your restaurant lines. One of the people. Oh, no, someone hurt themselves in the kitchen. Ouch. Ouch. Hope it's not bad. Hope it's not bad. Gang, I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you guys tomorrow night. If Tyler Durden turns up, you're in the club. Haha. <laughs> Bye everyone.